Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video. I've been seeing these 3D fruit gel nails all over my social media lately and I've certainly been influenced to try it out today. So in this video, we will be doing a fill-in of my poly gel nails along with some grapefruit and strawberry 3D nail art. It's been about a week and a half since I've done my nails. I have a tiny bit of growth here and I like to get that filled before I start the new design. My retention is also very good, as you can see there's no lifting at all, which means I won't have to completely remove any of my nails. So first thing we're going to do is remove the design. I'm using a large rail top bit on reverse to do this at a speed of 12,000 RPM. I'm only filing off the design from the nail bed upwards. I'm not getting close to the cuticle area yet, and I'm filing off any gel color or gel top coat I have on until it's completely gone. I had a very simple French design previously, so it didn't take a lot of effort or time to take it off. If you have a design with thicker gel like rhinestone or builder gel on top, you may want to raise the speed a little bit higher than I did for easier removal. If you want to shorten your nails, now would be a good time to do so, but I plan on keeping it this length. You can either clip it off with some nail clippers, or you can crank up your e-file at at least halfway. I usually go at around 23,000 RPM, depending on how thick my nail is, and I just drill it off. This is personally my preferred method, and it should come off with minimum effort. I left this small portion of gel near the cuticle alone because I'm going to go back in and file it off, as well as any discolored areas at a speed of 6,000 RPM. Any part that looks transparent or lacks color will gently be removed. I always like to remove a little bit more product than I may need to because I don't want to risk trapping anything underneath before I fill it in with more product on top. When you're removing the discolored areas, make sure that you keep the e-file parallel to your natural nail to avoid digging into it and causing damage to the nail plate. It's nice to keep a dusting brush on hand when removing the lifting, that way you can kind of see your progress and it'll make it easier as you file. Next, I'm switching to a mandrel bit and using a 180 grit sanding band at a speed of 3000 RPM, I'm going to very gently prep the natural nail for the product and remove the shine. I wanted to quickly show you guys how much product I took off before moving on. This is typically how much product I take off during a refill. So as you can see, I took off quite a bit, just enough for there to be no more discoloration. To prep the cuticle area, I'm using a flame bit at 5000 RPM to gently lift up the nail fold and remove that sticky cuticle on the nail plate at the same time. If you have stubborn cuticles or a lot of regrowth, you may benefit more from pushing up the nail fold first with a cuticle pusher before doing this step. After using the flame bit, I'm then going to use a diamond bit at 5000 RPM. I like to do 2-3 to three passes with this bit to not only remove any excess cuticle on my nail plate, but also remove any hanging skin on the nail fold. And any bits of skin that doesn't come off with the help of the diamond bit gets nipped off. This step is completely optional, it's just something I like to do for aesthetic purposes. Mm -hmm. 
To dehydrate the regrowth on my nail plate, I'm spraying 99% isopropyl alcohol directly on top and I'm wiping off the dust, debris, and oils with a lint-free wipe. If you've done your prep correctly, your regrowth area should look very dry after dehydrating. This product is what makes my retention last for so long. This primer is from Young Nails and it's called Protein Bond. And all you need to do is swipe a little bit of this on the regrowth. Or if you struggle with retention, I suggest adding two coats. Next step after primer is base coat. This is what will help the poly gels stick better onto your nail plate. My base coat is from Madame Glam and I'm applying it to the regrowth portion. It's not necessary to apply it on top of the poly gel portion, but if some gets on top of the poly gel, it's not a big deal at all. To refill my nails, I'll be using the same color as before. This poly gel is called Cheeky from McCart, and I'll be using their slip solution as well. However, 99% isopropyl alcohol works just as well to mold the poly gel. I do have a discount code for McCart that you guys can use if you want to save some money. I'll have it linked down below. Generally, you only need to apply about a pea size amount of poly gel to cover the regrowth, and I'm applying it directly underneath the cuticle and patting it down and dispersing it from sidewall to sidewall. Patting the gel gently and keeping the brush moist with slip solution is what will keep your brush clean and prevent poly gel from being caught inside. So try using light pressure when molding the gel and avoid using swiping motions near the cuticle area. Angling your brush is also super important when it comes to helping you maintain a nice shape. The closer you get to your cuticle and sidewalls, the more you'll want to angle it and sort of tuck in the gel near the edges. Then after you've molded the cuticle bead onto the nail, you can swipe the excess product down and blend it. Try to make it as smooth as you can and it'll save you so much time when it comes to filing. Lastly, you're going to want to clean your brush off and carefully swipe the brush along the cuticle area and sidewalls. And what this will do is it'll remove any gel that'll be touching your surrounding skin and it'll just make sealing the cuticle later on so much easier. After this step, give your nail a full cure for 60 seconds and then you can move on to the next. But after curing the cuticle bead, I realized that I was lacking some product on the edges here from over filing last time. I'm adding a pea-sized amount on the free edge and patting it down towards the tip of the nail. Polygel is a buildable product, so making mistakes like this is an easy fix. I'm going to repeat all these steps on my nails and I will speed up the footage a little bit. After applying and curing the poly gel, it will leave a sticky inhibition layer which can easily be removed with either some acetone or some rubbing alcohol and a lint-free wipe. After removing the sticky layer, it's then ready to file and I'll be using my e-file with a 180 grit sanding band at a speed of 10,000 to 15,000 RPM. You can see me targeting the edge of my thumb here where I applied the extra poly gel because it was a little bit more bulky there than the rest of my nail and I was doing my best to make it even. I used the file to take off the bulk and smooth out any lumps and bumps that came from application as much as I can while respecting the apex. If you have longer nails like me, it's so important to leave an apex on your nails to prevent breakage. Generally, the longer your nail is, the bigger your apex will need to be. The length of my nails are currently at a medium length, so my apex is pretty slim but definitely noticeable from a side profile. Having an apex present will give your nails the strength and balance that it needs. The best way to avoid overfiling your apex is to simply file around the free edge and only file over it minimally. I also want to add that you don't need an e-file to do polygel nails. You can still do all of this with a 180 grit hand file. It'll just take a little extra time doing it by hand, but it's definitely achievable. Having an e-file simply makes the process much quicker. Now I'm going to get closer to the cuticle area to seal it off and prevent it from lifting. When I'm sealing the cuticle, I always turn down the speed of my e-file to 6000 RPM or lower and gently go around the area until I see that the polygel is flush with the nail. For safety reasons, I would suggest not going any higher than 9,000 RPM when you're working this close to the skin. I personally prefer to work at a lower speed and do multiple passes because I feel like I have more control that way.
I like to use a hand file after using the e-file to perfect my shape. Using the 180 grit side, which is the less grittier side, I'm filing the bottom and the edges of the nail until I get my desired shape. After filing, you're going to want to remove all of the leftover scratches with a buffing block. This one is a dual ended one, with one side being 180 and the other being 240. I'll be using a mixture of both sides, starting out with the 180 grit to further smooth out the shape and then I'm switching to the 240 grit to finish by removing all of the scratches from the surface. After buffing the nails, I like to wash my hands with soap and water and then I come back and spray my nails with rubbing alcohol and scrub them with a manicure brush. This will just remove any leftover oils and debris. To ensure that my line work lays down smoothly, I'll be applying a thin layer of matte top coat to my nails and giving that a full cure in my lamp for 60 seconds. If you don't have matte top coat, a glossy top coat will work just as well. This is the first gel color I'm using. It's called The Core from Madame Glam. It's like this really pretty warm pink berry color and I'm using it to paint a chunky line around my cuticle area to represent the peel of the grapefruit. Make sure that you cure this strip for around 20 seconds before moving on to the next step which would be the inner peel. So I'm using a white gel polish and I'm starting to create the membrane of the grapefruit by painting a thin line directly underneath the peel. A 20 millimeter brush works really well to create straight lines like this, especially if you have shaky hands. You're going to want to use the same brush to paint a very thin line vertically down the middle and try to make it the same thickness as the previous line. Then create an horizontal line as well. Continue painting four more lines in between the ones that you just painted, almost like you're painting pizza slices or spider web. And then once you have eight sections, you're going to want to use the product from the middle, the grapefruit, and paint these faint lines and kind of stop halfway, if that makes sense. Sense. The pith of the grapefruit will be created naturally, so you won't have to add any extra product afterwards. And for some added detail, I'm going to round out these edges here with some more white gel color. I found that using a smaller liner brush makes this super easy. Then give the polish a full cure for 60 seconds. Squeeze out a generous amount of rhinestone glue and place the bead at the tip of the peel and lightly drag the gel towards the pith of the grapefruit. Once you're satisfied with how it looks, Make sure you flash cure it in place so it doesn't move around while you repeat the step on each wedge. Once each wedge is done, give the nail a full cure and use a glossy top coat to seal in the design. 
Next, I'm creating a 3D gel flower using McCart's 4-in-1 Glux Gel in clear and this dual-ended silicone pen. Please avoid touching this with your fingers. This is uncured gel, so use a glove to roll up the beads and set five of them aside in equal size. Then place each one on top of the nail one by one in the form of a flower and use the pointy end of the silicone brush to shape the flower by pressing each petal down gently towards the center. Once you're satisfied with how the flower looks, cure the gel in the lamp for 60 seconds. With the core, which is the same gel polish I used to paint the peel of the grapefruit, I'm also going to use it to paint the 3D gel flower. I only use three gel colors in this entire nail set, so you'll see me using this one for the next three nails as well. Then with the white gel polish, I'm painting the middle and fanning out the lines. I was feeling a little extra, so I decided to glue a little hot pink flower in the middle because it matches the core so well, and I topped it off with a gold caviar bead. Make sure that you cure everything before adding top coat on the 3D flower and the surrounding nail to finish. Third finger will be the Jingham design. I'm painting the base white to start and I'm adding two coats to make it very opaque. Cure in between each coat for 60 seconds. This design honestly took me the longest to do because trying to make it look perfect was such a tedious task and was very time consuming. I'm not sure if I want to attempt to do this design on my dominant hand. It's such a cute design, but I don't know. I might need to do something different. But anywho, I'm going to use this vibrant pink gel polish from McCart in the shade Plumeria Pink and I'm painting a few thick horizontal lines on my nails. I started with five but then I realized that four would look a little better with this length. When you're satisfied with it you can give it a quick cure. Then paint three vertical lines going down the middle with the same color. Try to make it the same thickness as your horizontal lines. Give this nail another cure and then take some white gel polish and paint lines both vertically and horizontally between the previous lines you had just painted and make sure to touch up those edges as well. Flash cure to prevent the gel from moving and trace out small squares on on the edges where your baselines connect with the same gel polish you used to create the peel of the grapefruit. In this case, I'm using the core from Madame Glam, and once you've traced each square, fill it in with the same polish. Repeat on all corners, then fully cure your nails, and finish it off with a glossy top coat. I'm going to use the core again as my base color for the strawberry nail and with a white gel polish, paint the seeds in rows and try to leave a good amount of space between each seed. It should look sort of like a basic polka dot pattern, but try to make the seeds a little bit more oval in shape. Avoid putting your seeds directly underneath one another and try to mimic what I painted on the screen instead. Then take your rhinestone glue again and brush it on diagonally between the rows of seeds and make the lines as equal as you can. When you feel happy with how it looks, give it a flash cure and move on to the next row to prevent the gel from moving. Do the same on the opposite side with the rhinestone gel overlapping the first row and fully cure for 60 seconds when you're finished the design. Add some top coat to seal and give it a full cure as well. I'm going to use whatever I have left on my palette to create the last design and I decided to do some flowers. All you need to do is dot on three to five dots per flower. I made my flowers cut off into half flowers because there wasn't a lot of room on my pinky. So I started out with one baby pink flower on the right 
and I made that one the biggest, and then I added two smaller ones on the left. I thought it was nice to only have to use three colors in this set because not only is it more convenient, but I think it's also less wasteful, and I think each nail complements each other very well. Remember to seal in your design with some glossy top coat and hydrate with some cuticle oil. I'm using this one from Essie, and then you're all done. I think this set is so pretty, and it's so eye-catching as well, and it looks like I paid a fortune for all of these designs. My favorite nail would have to be the grapefruit. It just looks so juicy and fun, and it's perfect for summer. I will be doing this set on my dominant hands, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that, and go ahead and follow me on Instagram to see it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in my next one.